This was a collaboration between Samuel Gross, myself, Simon Koch, Lukas Bernhard, Thorsten Holz, and Martin Jones. Uh, JavaScript is a hallmark of today's internet. It's everywhere and makes the websites we visit interactive. However, sometimes JavaScript programs can become a bit slow, a bit sluggish, and make the experience very slow and unpleasurable. And browser renders came up with a solution to optimize the execution time of JavaScript programs called just-in-time compilation. And basically what, what the engine does is it has a look at the big long running JavaScript programs in a website and looks at what is happening there. And here we have a small example, which is fa fairly trivial. And it is a counter and a loop. And every time the loop iterates, uh, a 10 is added to the counter provided in a helper function called add. And what just-in-time compilation does is it has a look at the profile of the program execution. And it looks what is happening there. And in this case, one of the attributes it will identify most likely is that there are only ints involved during addition. JavaScript is a weakly typed language, so there's a lot of overhead in checking what type is used in a function, what actual function needs to be used, for example, in the plus equal, and this slows programs down. And just-in-time compilation makes profile of those long-running functions, and in this case, it will realize that there are only ints involved and will create a special function accounting for this and optimizing away all those type checking and function selecting, and it will basically speculate that only integers will be added. However, it is aware that speculation might not always hold and will add, in this example, type guards, which before the, the uh, low-level function, the low-level plus is executed, will do a quick type check whether or not only ints are involved or not. In case there are not only ints involved, it will fall back and the slow execution, execution will resume and the checks and um, the, the selection for the right type will, will run again, but of course slower because it's not optimized anymore. Um, however, if the optimization holds and um, the, the specialized functions are executed, overall the, the, run, the speed of the function will increase dramatically and overall the experience will be faster and more pleasurable for the user. However, as you might imagine, such optimization steps are complex and complexity does breed error. Here we are again at the example I explained uh, just now. And we can now imagine that the whole function that needs to be optimized is a bit more complex. For example, we have a helper function executed in the add, which uh, is called do stuff and has basically no side effect in the initial example. It probably just prints, for example, a line at the console log. And in this case, what most likely will happen is that the execution of do stuff is also included in the optimized function after the type checks because there is no side effect. So why do the type checks again, slow down the function, let's just keep it there. However, what happens if the do stuff actually does have a side effect? And in this case, it would change A to a pointer. So A isn't an integer anymore after executing do stuff, but a pointer. Well, it depends. And let's assume that due to the complexity of recognizing uh, side effects, the just-in-time compiler misses this. And what will happen is that this effect is carried over. So do stuff is now executed and will not change A to a pointer. A is not an integer anymore. And of course, if we start adding stuff to pointers and changing the pointer, this might not end well and might actually have security implications. And this is how just-in-time compilation can go wrong. So to uh, recapitulate JIT compilation, uh, JIT compilation is a non-trivial optimization process that optimizes based on observed usage patterns, and it's complex, and complexity breeds errors, and such errors can introduce vulnerabilities, which, of course, we want to find. So how can we find, how can we test for JIT compiler uh, vulnerabilities? Well, there are some requirements. Uh, as I said, optimization is based on observed usage patterns, and this implies that code needs valid syntax. Of course, if you don't have valid syntax, the interpreter will just stop at the point where the syntax is invalid, or maybe even earlier, depending on how the code is processed, and you won't have any usage patterns that you can observe, that you can optimize on. Uh, next, the code has to be semantically correct, 
Of course, if the code isn't semantically correct, at the point where the error is, it will just crash, throw an error, and the usage pattern is broken. And again, the just-in-time compilation will most likely not trigger. Furthermore, we will probably need a lot of different samples, trying the most improbable combinations. I mean, just-in-time compilation is complex, but the developers are smart. They will have thought about most side cases, most issues that could arise. And to catch the issues that are still inside the engine, we need to try a lot of different and very, very improbable combinations that have been missed during the implementation process. So what we can came up with, or rather what Samuel came up with, is Facili. Uh, Facili is a fuzzer using an intermediate language to achieve the valid syntax and the semantically correct programs to generate JavaScript code. He developed it during his master thesis in the beginning of 2019. And Facili, as I said, is an intermediate language-based fuzzer. What does this mean? It means that it doesn't use JavaScript code as the representation of what fuzzing will happen on, but it used an intermediate language to do so, to achieve easier access to, to generation of code and to do mutations on the code. And that intermediate language is then lifted to actual JavaScript code, which will then be executed against the engine. Mutations are then performed on the intermediate language. So for example, if you want to change the method that is called, it will first change in the intermediate language representation, which will then transfer over to the lifted JavaScript program, which is then again executed against the JavaScript engine under scrutiny. Furthermore, another feature of Facili is that it doesn't need an input seed corpus. So what it uses is code generators. You provide it basically with a really small example JavaScript program. No need for a comprehensive and well thought of, thought of input seed set, but you can just provide a small program and it will start generating code from then on. And I think it's fairly handy because then you don't need to have that input seed corpus to start with. Well, now that we have introduced Facili and its capabilities, the question remains, how good is it actually? And to answer that question, we did a two-pronged approach. We first did a quantitative assessment. We wanted to answer the question, what code coverage does Facili actually reach? And then we did a, a qualitative assessment and wanted to answer the question, do we find bugs that were previously missed? Like how much does Facili address a gap in security fuzzing that has previously been missed? And first, let's talk about code coverage. And for code coverage, we ran Facili against the big three engines, JavaScript Core, um, SpiderMonkey, and um, V8, and here is an example. Let's have a look at JavaScript core. And more specifically, as I said, we want to target just-in-time compiler vulnerabilities. So we had a look specifically at, at just-in-time compiler code coverage. And as you can see, within 24 hours, Facili reaches a code coverage of about 59%. And of course, to assess how good or how bad that code coverage is, you have to compare yourself against another fuzzer, against recent state of the art. And to compare ourselves, we chose Superior, another JavaScript fuzzer. However, the big difference between Facili and Superior is that Superior requires an input seed corpus. And uh, sadly, we weren't able to find their input seed corpus, so we chose to use Dai, another fuzzer paper, another fuzzer publication at the same time, which provides their, their input seed corpus. And we run Superior with that input seed corpus, and it was able to reach about 57, 58% coverage. Um, however, as you can see, um, the line is fairly straight. And uh, this is due to uh, the die corpus already having a fairly, fairly large coverage. And to give a better assessment on how well Superior, in comparison to, to Facility, actually improves on the input seed corpus, reduce the input seed corpus down to 70% to get a second assessment, how much uh, it actually depends on the imposite corpus. And here you can see if we reduce the, the imposite corpus to 17%, why 17%? Well, if we went any lower, there wouldn't be a lot of files left, and that wouldn't be fair to a fuzzer requiring an input seed corpus. And as you can see, in that case, we reached 49% within 24 hours of fuzzing. Well, having code coverage out of the way, let's answer the question, uh, 
does Facility address a research gap in security fuzzing for JavaScript engines concerning JIT vulnerabilities? And to answer that question, we wanted to know how old are the, the issues we are able to find? Um, and we looked at the code, which was involved in the issues, and estimated the age. At what point in time, how, how long ago were those issues in, uh, introduced in month? And as you can see, some of the issues were introduced fairly long ago, some of them over three years ago. And I think this shows fairly well that Facili is able to fuss and reach sections of the JavaScript engines that were previously not reached by other fuzzers. And I mean, we, we targeted the main JavaScript engines. And it's safe to assume that those engin engines were fussed before and fussed during our initial um, assessment of Facili. And so I think those ages, the ages of those bugs or of those security issues are fairly impressive or significant in terms of what we are able to reach using Facili. So to summarize, Facili finds previously missed bugs, which are fairly old. And if you have a look at the code coverage for JIT-specific code, it also is comparable to other fuzzers. So thank you very much for your attention. If you want to reach me, you can just talk to me outside during a coffee break or when you see me, or just drop me an email if you want to. So I'm open for questions now. Thank you for your talk. Can you give me some uh, intuition as to why you use the intermediate language as opposed to parsing the abstract syntax tree? Um, yes, I can try. Um, I mean, Samuel implemented the thing you would probably be better able to address this. But the intuition is that using intermediate language, you're able to do fuzzy more efficiently. For example, if you use an AST, you can run into the, the situation that changing the AST or switching stuff in the AST doesn't really change the, the program in the end. And using intermediate language, we were able to, to circumvent that issue and mitigate it to some, some extent. Um. Maybe you want to follow up with the like what the specifics of, of the intermediate language are. I'm afraid I'm not that familiar with the intermediate language. Uh, and my question is: so you mentioned the 49 percent coverage, about 50 percent coverage with Fusili. What is the other 50 percent? Excuse me, come on, yeah. What is the remainder? Like, why? What would you need to change in Fusili to actually get, go beyond the 50 percent? What is it you not see? Well, I, I don't know, we, we didn't look at it, but I guess um, there needs to be more code generators for different types of code, maybe features which are not as popular, but which will add code coverage for those rare but still relevant features. Of course, like, I mean, the, the initial code generators written were for the most, uh, most prominent features of JavaScript, like loops or function codes or something like this. So to reach more coverage, I would assume that more code got generators for not as popular features need to be implemented. And facility is still being developed, so the code coverage will most likely improve in the future. The, like one, one of the things I wondered is, is the, the optimization. Right? You, you brought up optimization and reacting to optimizations quite a bit. I want to make sure that uh, you capture code that only kicks in after the, the chip compiler decides or sees, hey, this, this branch has been executed 20 times. What about branches that are only executed early versus frequently and the interactions between those? Are you considering capturing this or this is future work? I actually missed the last half of the question, if you were reading. JIT compilers decide based on runtime feedback when and how to optimize. Yes. Um, uh, they mean different optimizations may have different kind of bugs. How do you make sure that you capture all the different interplays between these optimizations? Well, I, I can't say whether or not we catch all of them. Uh, what we did is reduce, we reduced the amount of iterations required for optimization to kick in. So the optimizations will, will start earlier due to the initial flags provided to the engines. So this will probably ensure that we are able to, to reach most of our, a lot of the optimizations. So your assumption is that like the, the maximum amount of optimization will Thank you.